April Marie. We're in the heart of Texas, to be exact, Frisco, Texas, with the Texas Legends. But today, I'm at Hard Eight Pit Barbecue, ready to learn all about good Texas barbecue with some of the Texas Legends' leading stars. That's crazy. Welcome here, guys. Welcome to Hard Egg Barbecue. How are we doing today, guys? Welcome in, welcome in. What can we do for you? So we got a little bit of everything. We do open pit barbecue here at Hard Egg. Um, we've got the brisket's gonna be up there on the cutting board. That's what we're known for. But other than that, we got our pork ribs right over here. Right here, we got our turkey. We got ham. We got pork chop. We got bologna. We got regular sausage. We got jalapeno sausage. We got your pulled pork. Here we got the chicken poppers. We got shrimp poppers. We got the chicken. We got the sirloin. I'm a North Carolina guy. North Carolina, some pulled try. pork. I, nah, I hear you. I hear you. How much pulled pork do you want to try today, man? I don't need too much. No, too much. So we do a pulled pork sandwich. It's about a third of a pound of meat, and it's gonna get your bread. But man, if you come in here, don't just try one meat. I recommend you try a few different things. We sell everything by the pound, but you can get however much you want. Quarter pound, half a pound. I definitely recommend trying more than one meal. Brisket. Brisket, that's my guy. Hey, hey, hey. My guy. All right. So one pulled pork. Yeah, I'm going to say half pound. Yeah. All righty. Pulled pork, half pound coming up. You got to try at least a rib, a chicken popper, shrimp popper. You got to try something. I'll try rib. The rib is tough. I, I hear you. I hear you. Give him just a little bit, maybe a quarter pound of uh, of the brisket. Yes, sir. I'm from Austin, so. I right. yeah. yeah. I hear I'm, you. I'm a Texas guy. All right, so you like the brisket? Look, that's my favorite thing. I hear you. I hear you. Half pound brisket. Brisket, rib, chicken, then pull pork. Then two, three, five, ten ribs. About about five. Five. Right, are you about a big five. dude? I hear yeah. you. Five ribs, half pound of brisket. Absolutely. Y'all gonna get an experience today, guys. Chicken. chicken. All right, we're gonna do a chicken popper for him. Chicken popper is chicken wrapped with bacon, jalapeno, and onion. And then the other one's shrimp wrapped with bacon, jalapeno, and onion. Ooh. It's gonna get a little hot around here. All right, guys, so we smoking all of our briskets here in pits. Um, every morning we come in really early, about five o'clock. We're putting, uh, each pits hold 25 brisket. Depending on the day of the week, depends on how many briskets we're gonna cook. We're using mesquite wood, we turn it into coal, we shovel, shovel the coal in here, and then it takes about eight hours to 10 hours, depending on the temperature outside and other factors. That's 25 briskets. We put them on uh, this morning, uh, it was about uh, six o'clock. We put them on and they cook for at least eight hours. Uh, it take, it's a long process. We put a lot of, lot of work into it. We pay a lot of attention. We're constantly checking the pitch, checking the temperatures, making sure everything's up to standard. This is gonna be the, some of the best brisket you're gonna get, I'm telling you right now. I'm looking forward to you guys trying it and hearing the feedback. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Thank you. Potato salad, coslo, twice baked potato salad, green salad, green salad, jalapeno pork. Who caught the, the mac next and cheese? Next session, we have a pinto beans. Yes, a pinto. You said the mac and cheese is. Yeah, the mac and cheese is right down here. Crazy. We got regular barbecue sauce here and spicy barbecue. I'm not a big fan of barbecue sauce. I think it'll be. I think it'll be good by itself. Don't go anywhere as we sit down with Theo Pinson and Greg Brown III on their life lessons and journey to the NBA. Oh, I said bring him back, let JD come up to the ball. Hey, J. Jackson, curl back to the sport. Recently, the video coordinator for Jason Kidd and the Dallas Mavericks Jordan Spears knew that he desired more than just showing guys film, but rather really getting into the trenches and asking for the opportunity of a lifetime to become the head coach of the Texas Legends. Thank you for your service. 
It's been fun. I think, you know, one of the toughest things is just to get the rep to be the head coach. You know, it's always easy when you're an assistant or you're a video coordinator or whatever the case may be to sit there and judge. And so to be able to actually be in that seat, to be in those shoes is really cool. And I see, I see the value that it can provide just going forward in my career in terms of being a coach. So it's been a super enjoyable experience for me. Hey, every time we run these, GB roll all the way down. The objective of the set is to try to still get you up to 77 and put pressure on the rim. And then when that fails, that's when we play to the splits. I think one of the things is the G League has come along so much, so the level of investment from teams is going up. So the staff number and volume is going up, but it still pales in comparison to the NBA. So to be able to do so many different things, to have so many different responsibilities, offense, defense, um, decision making on operations things, all of that is like, just things I could never imagine. And, you know, it's just stretching me in a positive way to just be able to handle that capacity of, of workload. The most important things the head coach believes he should teach his players are the nuances of the game. With the glaring differences in player salaries, travel, and other benefits when you compare what NBA players earn, Spears knows guys on the cusp of a call-up are motivated and focused. But he sees a need to help his players add to their talent by showing them that their day-to-day -day habits are what will ultimately separate them from the rest. So giving them the resources to take care of their bodies and eat healthy, along with a key component of any former video coordinator, getting into a routine of watching film could hopefully be the reason they take the next steps in their basketball career. The biggest thing for me is I was just fortunate in my time here to get the, the opportunity to you know, work with all of these guys, to be behind the bench, to be in the meetings, and understand just like the philosophy for what we're doing. So to take it to this level, which is a little bit more foundational, to be able to work with our young guys and all of that stuff, and more of a player development role, I think is, is really cool to just affect the organization in a different respect. So I'm fortunate, I'm grateful for the responsibility they're entrusting me with. I think you see things at a more macro view from this standpoint. You know, as a video coordinator, you're so, caught up in the day-to-day -day of what the head coach needs, what the assistant coaches need, you know, here where you're able to kind of just like chart out a course day by day and kind of figure out like what is needed, what is going to get this player or help get this coach or whoever where they need to be when they need to. His former boss, Mavericks head coach Jason Kidd, now his fellow coach in the Dallas organization and someone Spears seeks out for advice, supported the bold move to the bench. Video coordinator, the head too, there's a lot of pressure because that's the foundation of the whole program. Uh, but talking to Jordan about wanting to be a coach, uh, I thought it was a great time to start that process. Uh, he's been in the video room and I thought being able to go go uh, and be able to start his coaching career uh, was, was the right thing to do. Um, and he was all for it. Uh, I was a little su surprised that he wanted to do it, but I think it was the right thing to do. You know, the advice I told him is that don't feel panicked. Uh, sometimes put a clock on yourself when you have to draw up a play uh, because there's a lot going on uh, to make sure that you can get your information across. And then lastly, when you're done with the play, just make sure you ask the key guy who the play's for, do you know what you're doing so that the play will work. But uh, I told him to have fun, uh, to enjoy it, to, to keep a diary, to understand that you can't remember everything and that uh, the players are listening to you, you're the leader, so whatever you tell them, they're gonna do. This was something I really wanted for myself. Just, again, I said the opportunity to get the reps to do these different things was, was important to me for my career, and then to also be able to impact the organization at this level, but like, I truly believe it's a very unique place. It's one of the most unique places to coach, and if you can coach there, you can coach a lot of places. Uh, it's something I'm grateful for, and I'm enjoying every second of it. As we've shown you all year, being a part of the G League creates the opportunity for valuable experiences no matter the role. And without the league, who knows if Jordan Spears gets his shot as a head coach or other men or women who want to be trainers, refs, or front office staffers. But it's definitely an opportunity they are all embracing. All right, time for a break, but we'll be back with our lunch conversation over some great barbecue with Theo Pinson and Greg Brown of the Texas Legends when we return.
All right, guys. So we just got done witnessing some true, authentic Texas barbecue in the making. So you know, I have to get off with this question. Get invited to a barbecue. We have to take a dish. What are you pulling up with, and why? Mac and cheese is fine, first of all. And then it's easy to make. Sweet tea. Uh, that's not a dish. It's a dish. It's central. You gonna eat with no no drink? <laughs> Sweet tea, easy. I'm not trying to work too hard, but I'll go to it, man. I just want to go, eat, and drink some sweet tea. At least you're honest. Exactly. So. I'm not working. <laughs> Recurring to your legend number 11, Theo Pitches. Obviously, at the end of the day, one of the reasons why I was so excited to talk to you guys is because you guys are some phenomenal hoopers. You, with your experience, Theo, that you've been able to accomplish throughout your career, and you, Greg, just to see you throughout the season, how you've been able to evolve. I mean, you, early on in the season, you signed a two-way deal. How do you feel like just the experience and the knowledge you gained with the Mavs has now translated into your game while with the Legends? I'll probably say even just not with the mouse, even with the legends, it's just like leading on vets like Theo and Justin. Uh, good, shout out to Justin, good luck to where in Minnesota. But you know, just leaning on people older than me, just trying to figure out information, especially being young, just coming out of college, spending one year. So, you know, the vets like Theo, Jajax, uh, Marquise, Grant, when he was here, they really just helped me just figure out just how to be a pro coming in day in and day out and just being consistent. But you feel, I mean, you really made some noise earlier this month, racking up 20 assists, a franchise record, huge. With your experience, also as a former two-way player, when you put up those numbers, what are you looking to prove to both an NBA team, but more importantly to yourself? One thing, just still being able to play at a high level. Um, biggest thing is consistency. So I try to be as consistent as I can, shoot the ball well. Just showing I'm versatile, you know, not bogged down in one position or doing one thing, even though if I have to, I do what I have to do. And my biggest thing, I just try to win games. That's all I focus on is winning games and the rest will take care of itself. Running your own race, that podcast, fire. Right. I appreciate it. 60,000 followers, YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's been fun. It's been way more fun than I thought it would be. At first I just did, I was just doing it, but then just understanding like people really listening, people really hearing other people's stories and understanding like you can get to where you want to get to no matter what. Like I said, I was a top 10 player in the country, all that, went undrafted, but I'm still here. You see what I'm saying? So I just want to get those people's journeys out there and understand like, listen, just because you don't do it the way you dream of, like I dreamed of getting called by Adam Silver uh, on the stage. It didn't happen for me, but I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? So. Just giving uh, the, that outlet for people to listen and understand that it's still possible. Have you found a newfound purpose with it as well? It's weird you say that, kinda. It's just more of like, like it's kind of more to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love basketball, I love playing basketball, but also I feel like I have an obligation to continue to get these people's stories out there and have people understand that there are different ways to get to where you want to get to. Because like I said, I wasn't planning on doing this. Like I was just doing it for fun. I really was. And now it's still, it's still fun, but like it's, it's something that I never thought would happen, but it's, it's becoming something I'm coming, becoming really passionate about. And again, Greg, I go back to you because what are you really you know, learning from them? And at the same time, what do you feel like you're teaching them in the process? I think I'm teaching them probably that there's a difference between younger and older players that, that Theo might be getting a little old. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, nah, I'm learning a lot from them. Just slowing down, learning the game. You know, early in the season, I wasn't as mature on and off the court, on the court, especially just rushing, trying to force plays instead of letting plays happen. And Theo and Jax, thank God they're here, was just telling me all the time to slow down. Gee, you're way too athletic. You're too fast. Like, you don't got to rush nothing. Just let it come to you and really just letting that hone in during the season and letting it marinate. And I've gotten a lot better with, with that just by the help of Theo and Jajax just staying on my tail about that. To piggyback on that, like, there's not a lot of guys 
as basketball players, there's a lot of egos. GB's one of the best teammates I've had of just like receiving information and just taking it, regardless if it's we're trying to be hard on him or we're not. He takes the information and he tries to do the best of his ability to correct it the next time. And that's not normal. Yeah, receptive. Yeah, like for him to admit that he wasn't as mature at the beginning of the year as he was as he is now, regardless of his growth. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I know there's one guy, like if I need to tell you know, GB I need you to do this or do that, he gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm not saying I have all the answers either, but like I know a little bit more than I have the experience and I've seen a lot. He wants to be in the NBA. Greg's an NBA player. Everybody on our team wants to be a two-way or in the NBA. So you're trying to figure out how to be a good teammate. You're trying to figure out how to play the best as you possibly can. But also, you got to be selfish a little bit because you want to do well to get recognized. And that's hard. So you kind of got to lose yourself in the situation and just be where you are in that moment. And that's hard to do for younger guys. Yeah, the younger guys soon learn, like the vets have, that the G League does test you. More to come with Theo and Greg as they talk about being strong mentally as they pursue their path to the NBA. Welcome back. More of our conversation with G League Texas legends Theo Pinson and Greg Brown III on defining success and how they handle the challenges of getting the call-up. I'm blessed I've always been this type of guy. I've always been a guy that loves the success of my teammates and for myself. I couldn't be happier for Justin. There's no reason he should have been in the NBA. But uh, I'm beyond happy for him. Do I think I should be there too? Yes. I would give him the chance first before I got mine because of how deserving he is of it. And I know how much he has put into it. He sacrificed some time away from his family, who's in Tennessee, and he's here playing, trying to play basketball. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard because I'm, I've always been a guy, everybody knows me for being the bench stuff and being activist, but that's just me, you know what I'm saying? And I can look back and say, that might've hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Does he take the game, does he care? I'm just doing it as good as my heart. You know what I'm saying? You're like, just being Theo. I'm just being Theo. And that's why I look at GB, I'm like, you should never, he should never stop being who he is because I'm gonna be me regardless of what the situation is. Like I enjoy the success of my teammates and sometimes that can get taken different ways from different people. We like, do you care? Like, are you serious about it? Do you want to play? I'm like, duh. And then you, Greg, like, how do you kind of deal with the pressures of going through the game? You know? It's funny, I was talking to my dad about this the other day. I just kind of took in the mindset of like, just try to come in each day and see what I can get better at. Lean on somebody and get some information on and off the court. Just try to get 1% better each day on something. That's how I kind of distract myself from, dang, why am I not here? Why am I not here? Because that can really, that can consume you. It's, it's very it's very consuming because I feel like this is an op. As much as it is skill and how good you are in the league, it's, it's about, like you gotta wait for your opportunity and wait for the opportunity, it can be a day month, year, two, three years. So I just say, just try to prepare myself for that moment by getting better each day. It tests your faith. Yeah. We getting tested right now. You know what I'm saying? We still, as much as we, it's been great doing the interview, we're, we would love to be in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? So you just, like you said, you just gotta come in every day. As much as everybody say, Theo, you always got a smile on your face. You always seem like you're in a good mood. I'm human. You know what I'm saying? I get pissed off. I see other people getting 10 days. I don't have one. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard, but at the same time, it's one of those situations where you just gotta be a pro about it. We wanna be somewhere. We wanna make our parents proud. We wanna make our family proud, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Everyone has a different calling. Everybody knows when that opportunity comes, you just gotta seize it. Greg, me, anybody on our team, we get that opportunity, ain't no looking back. Ain't no looking back and make the best out of it. If it don't work out, don't work out. And it's hard to say. It's easy for me to say because I'm on year six. You know, you're three, two, three. It's harder for younger guys because you just, you want to get established. You want to get that name. I have somewhat of a name, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, was, I was where he is. I was stressing every day. 
I'm like, what do I do? How do I stay? How do I continue to get better? How do I stay in the league? And it's hard. So I told him earlier this year, I said, GB, it's okay to have a bad day, bro. Like, if you coming in, you got a bad day, just let everybody know. Be like, I, yo, I just don't got it today. That's fine. You just can't let it be a trickle effect. You can't let it go to the next day. You can't dwell on it. You, everyone deserves a day. Like, there's a day I'm like, yo, I don't got it. I don't feel like talking. I'm gonna be in and out. I'm gonna handle my business and I'm gone. And that's okay. Well, thanks so much, guys. I really took a lot out of this conversation. I think these are important conversations to have, even obviously amongst teammates, but I think even sharing your experience, your uh, kind of your trials and tribulations inspire other people, For sure. you know, on their race For or sure. on their journey. For sure. So thanks so much, guys. Oh, we appreciate it. Great conversations and even greater barbecue. A huge thank you to the Texas legends for letting us chop it up with both Greg and Theo today. And a huge thank you to Heart 8 Pit Barbecue with their five locations across Texas. Trust me when I say you're gonna wanna check them out. But for now, we'll see you guys next time. Man, I just stopped eating this. I was about to fall asleep. <laughs> Nothing right now. I, I need a nap.